Professor Clarence here for Clarence Maths. Today we're going to look at the National 5 Applications of Maths Paper 2 for 2023 with full solutions. National 5 Applications of Maths 2023 Paper 2, Question 1. A lake has a volume of 14,730,000 litres due to decreasing rainfall. The volume is expected to decrease by 2.8% annually. Calculate the expected volume of the lake after three years. Give your answer to three significant figures. So this is a depreciation question. So I start off by finding my multiplier. So that's 100%. Take away 2.8%. 100 minus 2 is 98. So that's 97.2%. And I change that to a decimal divided by dividing by 100, which is 0 0.9. Seven two. So the sum I need to do is 14,730,000 times 0 0.972 to the power of 3 years. 14,730,123 times 0 0.972 to the power of 3. So that gives me an answer of 13527. 13527. 001.60704. Now it says leave your answer to three significant figures, so that means I go one, two, three and round at this point. So the two tells me to round down, so it's one, three, five, zero, 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 all the way up to the point. But after the point, you just drop all them off. Just check it's the same length one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're done there. Next National 5 Application of Mass 23 Paper 2, Question 2. A glazier is edging the perimeter of a window. The window is in the shape of two rectangles and two identical quarter circles. Calculate the length of edging required for the perimeter. So perimeter is all the way around the outside, so I'm going to have to go 100 plus 2,300 plus another 100. But then it's this arc length here. So you will recall from the start of the exam paper that the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. And we have got two quarters of a circle, so we work out a quarter and then just double our answer. So for a quarter circle, we have one quarter times pi times the diameter. Now be very careful here. This is the radius, so the diameter is double this, which is 1,400. Get a calculator out and work that out, but then double it. 1 quarter times pi times 1,400, which is 1,099.557. So for both quarters, That's 2 times 1099.557. I'll just leave it in my calculator and times by 2. I get 2199.115148. Well, I'll just put dot 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 rather than rounding. So there we go. We've done our circles. So our perimeter is just going to be equal to the answer we just got 2199.1148 plus, and then we've got 1,000, 2,300, another 1,000. So I'll just write that as I go, 1,000, 2,300, plus another 1,000, plus, now let's be careful with this, I missed it almost. Notice this, this goes down, along, up, curves, curves, but then you've got this bit in the middle. So how big is this bit in the middle? Let's just work that out. Well, I've got 700 to here and 700 to here. We know that's 1,400. So this bit in the middle is 2,300 minus 1,400. If you need, you can use your calculator at any time, but that is 900. So that extra bit is 900. So we need to add on 900 as well. 2199.1148. No need to round. I'm going to round it in anyway. Plus 1,000. Can't really see that. Plus... 2,300 plus, I think it's another 1,000 plus a 900. That gives me a grand total of 7,399.1148. Put my dot dot dots in because remember I didn't round. But if you did want to round, it doesn't ask you to round. 
couple of significant figures would be appropriate. So about, I can put that as 7,400 millimetres, I think would be fine. But any reasonable grounding would be okay. Three and a half to five upcase to maths 23, paper two, question three. Fiona's having a back garden redesigned. A new fence is to put up from A to B and from B to C. Rolls of fence are three metres long, cost £22 per roll. Calculate the cost of the fencing. So, A to B is here and here, so we ought to have that length, that's 21 metres. So let's just write that down, A to B equals 21 metres. And it wants us to go from B to C, which is from here to here. You'll notice you've got two right angled triangles, so I can do Pythagoras twice essentially. If I do Pythagoras here, that'll give me this length. And then Pythagoras with these two, you get this length. So for clarity, let's call that one and two. So Pythagoras on one, let's call this little length here just x for the sake of it. Five squared plus seven squared is equal to x squared. Five squared plus seven squared is a calculator job. 74. So, so x squared is equal to 74. Now you could just leave that as x squared because you're going to actually square it again when you do the 21 squared before you square root. But I'm assuming a lot of you are going to square root here. So I'm going to find x as the square root of 74, which is equal to 8.60 to 3. But you could have just left it as 74 for the x squared because now what we're going to do is Pythagoras on shape 2. So for shape 2, just being very careful. This is the hypotenuse across opposite right angles, also hypotenuse. So if I call this side, say, let's call it y, then this squared and this squared I have to take away because I've already got the longest side. So that means that y squared equals 21 squared minus the answer we just got squared. So that equals, getting a calculator, 21 squared minus this answer squared, which is 74, because it's the square root of 74 we had, or just put it in again, is equal to 367. So y is the square root of 367. 19.157 or 19.16. I'll just put that as 19.16. And that's meters. So now we've got both our lengths. We've got 21 from A to B and 19.16 from B to C. So total length twenty-one point five seven. is 40.16. Now it also tells us some information in the question. It tells us that rows of fencing are three meters long and cost 22 pound per row. So I now need to work out well, how many rows I need to buy. So number of rows is equal to our answer of 40.16 divided by three because they're three meters long. So taking that in our calculator, we get 13.38 with a bunch of other numbers. But that means we need to buy 14 because otherwise we'll be short. So we're buying 14 rolls. And then the last bit, they cost £22 per roll. So the cost is equal to 14 times 22. And we get £308. And we're done there. S squared National 5 applications to Maths 23, paper 2, question 4. A reception area in a hotel features a large mirror. The mirror is in the shape of a square with four identical semicircles on each side. The square has length 1.2 metres. I notice I've not put that on the diagram, so let's do, let's just draw our square at the side and just put 1.2 metres for the sake of clarity for ourselves. And then the semicircles have a diameter of 0 0.7. So on this diagram, I will just note that this length here is equal to 0 0.7 meters. It now says part A, find the area of the mirror. So we need the area of the square, add 
the area of all the circular parts. So the area of the square is just 1.2 squared or 1.2 times 1.2, length times breadth. 1.2 squared is 1.44 meters squared. And then for our semicircle, Now I'm going to do this in one go here. I've got four times semicircles, so four lots of a semicircle is half a circle, so it's a half. And from the start of the exam paper, pi r squared for a circle times pi times r squared. So I need to identify my r. Well, r is equal to 0 0.7 divided by 2. Use a calculator if you have to, but you get 0 0.35 meters. So now I can do my sum. 4 times a half times pi times 0 0.35 squared. 4 because there's 4 of them, a half because a half circles, 0 0.35 because it's the radius. 4 times a half, which is 0 0.5, times pi, times 0 0.35 squared. I get 0 0.7696, blah, blah, blah. I'll just leave that in the calculator. So our total area is equal to the 1.44 plus the 0 0.76969. So getting my calculator back out, I'll just leave that in and then add 1.44. So I'll press equals, add 1.44. I get 2.20969, 2.20. 969. Again, it doesn't ask us to round, so we could get away with not rounding, just put our units in, meters squared, or I'm just going to round it for the sake of clarity. That's about 2.21 meters squared. And we're done there. Question 4 continued. The hotel bought a different mirror for the ballroom. The options for the mirrors are shown on the table, so you can buy some different things here, fixing back in, glass colour, thickness, Standard anti-glare, blah, blah, blah. Right, let's just look at what it wants. The hotel bought a mirror with an area of three square metres. Okay. The hotel chose the following options for a mirror. So we need to just be very careful to pick the correct options. Option one, four millimetre thick silver glass. Four millimetre. So let's go to our table first so we get the right thing. Glass colour and thickness is the bottom. It's four millimetre. So that's bronze. That's silver. So the one we're picking is this one four millimeter silver the next one says anti-glare glass coating so we're looking for glass coating is the top standard anti-glare so i can highlight this is the one we've picked anti-glare next bullet point standard fixings so looking for the fixing column which is the second one oh, it's a row sorry Basic standard premium, standard is the one we want, so I can mark that one. And the last bit, it's a foil backing, so backing is the third one down. No backing, foil backing, there's my foil backing here. And of course it's going to ask us how much this costs. Calculate total cost of the mirror. Okay, we just need to add everything up. Taking a note the fact that we have also have an area of the mirror of three square metres, which we'll probably need. Let's do each bullet point in turn or do it in order from top to bottom it's up to you i'm just going to do it by bullet point so four millimeter thick so we look at the price it says price per square meter 38 pound so i need to do 38 times three because it's three square meters that gives me 114. i'll put my pound signs in at the end now we've got our next bullet point, which is the uh, anti-glare. So let's look at the price of that one. Our anti-glare is £16 per square metre. So we've got 16 times 3, because it's 3 square metres. That gives me 48. Our next bullet point, standard fixings. Standard fix. So they're £32 per mirror, so that's just £32. And the last one, foil backing. 
Well, in the table, our backing is costing £20 per miller, so that's just £20. All the answers just get added up, that's the cost of my mother. So total cost, 114 plus 48 plus 32 plus 20 equals, not even going to bother trying to add that myself, let's get a calculator, take full use of your calculator. £214. Let's put the pound sign in. £214. And we're done there. Next question, answer 5, application of maths 2023, paper 2, question 5. Stuart records the chlorine levels in his hot tub. I do that every day. A sample of the levels is shown below. For these levels, calculate the mean, then standard deviation. Okay, standard stuff here. To calculate the mean, you add them up, divide by how many there are. So let's write down the sum we need to do. Always write down sums that you're doing, even if you're using a calculator. 0 0.8 plus 1.9 plus 1.1 plus 2.6 plus 3.1 plus 2.4 plus 2.1 in brackets because I'm then dividing all of that by 7 because it's 7 days. So calculator, take full advantage of this calculator. 0 0.8 plus 1.9 plus 1.1 plus 2.6 plus 3.1 plus 2.4 and the last one, plus 2.1. If I'd use brackets, I would just put it in brackets. So I'll just press equals and then divide by 7. I get 2. Units are not usually required for the mean, but it doesn't even give us units anyway. So there we go. Calculate the standard deviation. From the start of the exam paper, there's two ways to calculate the standard deviation. I'm going to show you one of them. So the formula I use is for the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. But there is another more complicated form, I feel, so I always use this one. Now, x bar cat stands for the mean. So I'm doing every number, take away the mean, squared, add them all up, depending on how many I've got. A nice little table to, to illustrate this. So I usually just draw a three-bit table here. x goes here, that's all my numbers. x minus x bar, which is the top of the formula, take away the mean. And then x minus x bar squared. And at the end, you get a nice total down here somewhere. And it's this, this total that goes in the whole of the top of the formula. And then you divide by one less than the number of numbers you've got and square root the answer. So let's write down our numbers 0 0.8, 1.9. And then we've got 1.1, 2.6. And then we've got 3.1, 2.4. And finally, our last one was 2.1. Being very careful, you don't miss any of these. I'm just going to delete this little bit that I added so I can work. Okay, x minus x bar. Now, you don't really need to write down the sum you're going to do, but I'll do the first one. Our x bar was 2, so we do 0 0.8 minus 2. Don't worry about getting negative numbers here. You are going to get negatives. Minus 1.2. 1.9 minus 2. Minus 0 0.1. 1.1 minus 2. Minus 0 0.9. 2.6 minus 2. 0 0.6. 3.1 minus 2. 1.1. 2.4 minus 2. 0 0.4. 2.1 minus 2. 0 0.1. Your negatives are fine because look, when you put a negative in a calculator and square it, you get a positive answer. Just put brackets around it. Let me show you. Bracket minus 1.2, close the bracket. Press squared. Oh, look, it's a positive number. Now, you can just drop a negative when you square it in the calculator, just put 1.2 squared. So I'm going to do it for all of these numbers. So I've got 1.44, 0.1 squared, 0 0.01, 0 0.9 squared, 0 0.81, 0 0.6 squared, 0 0.36. 1.1 squared, 1.21, 0 0.4 squared is 0 0.16, and 0 0.1 squared I've already done is 0 0.01. So now I add all these up to get a grand total. 1.44 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.81 plus 0 0.36 plus 1.21 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.01. We get 4. 
rather than likely, but there we are. So that means we can work out our standard deviation. Our standard deviation is simply the square root of 4, because we just worked that out, divided by 1 less than the number of numbers we started with, which is 6, because we started with 7. None of this is non-calculator, so I'm not even going to bother simplifying that. Square root of, make a bracket, 4 divided by 6, close the bracket, 0 0.81649. 0 0.81649. Round that to a better degree of accuracy. It really should be one decimal place, but I'll put two just in case. Let's call that 0 0.82. And we're done there. This friend Collins Hot Tub had a mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 1.4. Make two valid comparisons about the cloning levels of Stuart and Collins Hot Tubs. Well, let's look at our answers again. We got 2 and 0 0.82. So for Stuart, we had a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 0 0.82. And then we can just work on this. His friend Colin had a mean, so let's compare the means first, 2.2 and 2. So comparing the mean, you always use the word on average. On average, the chlorine levels In, well, Collins is higher. Collins hot tub are greater than Stewart's. Since 2.2 is bigger than 2. And there you go. There's a mark. Now let's compare the standard deviation. Standard deviation is about how variable the levels are. So Stewart's was 0 0.82, Collins is 1.4, so Collins chlorine levels are more varied. So Collins chlorine levels are more varied than Stewart's. I suppose in the hot tub, not actually the people, but you'll be fine with that. I'll just do it for the sake of clarity. And we can just write since, again, the idea here is 1.4 is bigger than 0 0.82. I always just remember one statement, really. Bigger. But there we go. Okay, question, next question. Colin had a new hot tub installed in his garden. It normally takes a team of four workers 12 hours to complete the task. The company sent additional worker to help complete the task. All the workers work at the same rate. We started at 8, took a 30 minute break for lunch. What time did they finish installing the hot tub? Okay, so this is reverse proportion, inverse proportion. Okay, so you know, you think that if you're doing work, the more people that do the work, the less time it takes. So four workers usually take 12 hours. So to do one worker, well, if this was a me baking a cake, I would divide by four. And it would take seven three hours. That makes no sense. One worker's not going to take three hours, not unless he's in Captain America or something, or a flash. So it's the opposite, inverse proportion. 12 times 4. 12 times 4 hours, which equals 12, 24, 48 hours. So I now know one worker takes 48 hours, and it says how many workers have we got? An additional worker. So we're going to five workers now. So now we can divide. We know it's 48 hours for one worker, divide by 5 to get a smaller number. 48 divided by 5. I'm going to get a feeling this is a decimal. 9.6 hours. The usual with this, you get a decimal time, so you're going to have to change that decimal time into hours and minutes. So to change 9.6 hours into hours and minutes, well, we've got 9 hours. And then to get our minutes, we've got 0 0.6 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, so times by 60. I can do that without a calculator, but let's just do it with anyway. 0 0.6 times 60 is 36. So it's 36 minutes. Now to answer the question, they started at 8 and took a 30 minute break for lunch. What time do we finish? So we're starting at 0800. And then we're adding... Add to 30 minutes anytime you want, just wait to the end. 
Let's just add our nine hours. Eight plus nine is 17. I'm going to write 1700. I'm going to try to change that into PM or AM. It is five o'clock, of course. Add my 36 minutes and I get 17.36. I mean, I need to add 30 minutes. Easiest way to do that is add up to the next hour first. So 36 becomes 46. 56 is 24 minutes, which leaves me an extra six minutes left over to get to 18. Oh, 06. So we finish at 18.06. Oh, Just check we don't ask you for it in AM or PM. It doesn't ask, so it's fine. And they gave us it in 24 hour time anyway. Next week, National 5 Applications of Maths 2023, Paper 2, Question 6. Lorna was travelling around Europe. She converted £640 into Polis' Lotties. I hope that's right. She was in Poland for four days. She spent 340 Polish Zlotties each day she was in Poland and then she converted her Polish Zlotties into Euros. How many Euros did she receive? I hate these questions, they're so silly. If you were in Poland, right? And you're going to change it into Zlotties, you wouldn't change it back to pounds first. You would just get told how much it's worth. But for this, these questions, you're not told what a Zlotties worth in Euros. So you're going to have to go back to pounds and then back to Euros. That's how these questions work. So let's do it bit by bit by bit. Lorna converted £640 into Polish Lotties. Let's do that one first. 640 times. And the exchange rate for Zlotties is 4.94. So I can just get my calculator out and write down whatever that is. Three one six one point six. So 0.60, because we'll just assume that every currency is decimal. Let's just write Zlotties. Okay, next one. She was in Poland for four days and she spent 340 Polish Zlotties each day she was in Poland. So she spent four times 340. Which is 1360 Zlotties. And then says, she, then says she converted the rest into euros. So I now need to work out how much she's got left. So left is 3161.60 minus 1360, which equals 1801.60. Make sure you put two decimal places, okay? Money. Zlotties. That's what she's got left, and now we want to change it back into euros. So if we go back to our table, we want Zlotties. We can't get to euros. We need to go back to pounds, so divide 100 pounds times by the euros. The thing I need to do first of all is 1801.60 divided by her 4.94. That gives me 364 point, you notice it says 696, so 70, that's in pounds. And then to change it to euros, 364.70 times that exchange rate of 1.15. Which equals 419.405. So four one euros. Now, if you did this sum and I did it earlier, as one go divide then times straight away, you actually get four one nine point forty because it will not round twice. But I've got a feeling you need to round twice because you changed it, then changed it. So uh, either way, I think you'll be fine. Question six: Continue. Lorna visited Switzerland and decided to buy some cheese. The cost of five types of cheese is shown on the table, and it's two hundred fifty grams Swiss francs. Okay, so she got three different deals for buying the cheese. Best Buy question here. Lorna's going to buy 250 grams of each cheese. Use working. Determine the best deal for buying all five cheeses. Use working to justify your answer. So, you know, five out of here, five out of here, five out of here. And she's going to buy 250 grams of each cheese. Right. So it's already 250 grams. So we just need to now just... Use these prices with each deal. So just do it bit by bit. Let's do deal A. You buy all five for 
50 francs. Okay, so that's just 1850. There's no sum, don't overly complicate things. It's not saying 1850 each or anything, just 1850. So we have given us that one. So part B says buy all five and get the cheapest free. Okay, so all five, we get the cheapest free, which is this one. So we just don't add them together. So we just need to add these four numbers. So two pound, 2.50 plus 7.50 plus seven plus three, because the other one's three anyway. So it's 7.50, 8, 9, 50, 20. It's gonna be 20 in total, 20 francs. Use your calculator if you have to at any point. Part C, buy all five and save 15%. Okay, so I need to buy all five. Two pound 50. It's not pounds, it's francs. 7.50. Seven, three, and two. Well, I've already worked out the previous was 20, so that's 22 francs. You save 15%, so you get 15% off. So there's two ways to do that. Since we're on a calculator paper, Take away 15% to get 85% and times by 0 0.85 or work out 15% and take it away. I'll do it the first way because it's quicker. So if you're going to save 15%, that means you're going to pay for 85%. So 0 0.85 times 22. There's no way I'm doing that without a calculator. 18.70. Determine the best deal. So we started off with 1850. B was 20 and C is 1870. Let's just highlight the ones there. Therefore, deal A is the cheapest and therefore the best buy. Deal A is best as it's the cheapest. You could then say to be over egg in this 18. 0.50 is less than 20 and 18.70. But let's just leave it there. Now, Lorna also purchased a paperweight as a gift. The paperweight is in the shape of a cube with a hemisphere on top. A hemisphere is half a sphere, of course, with a dam of six centimeters. Calculate the volume of the paperweight. Start of exam paper it does tell us that uh, a sphere was four thirds pi r cubed. It does not tell us a cube. We were just a, we're, or a cuboid, so you need to know that yourself, okay? So let's take a note of a sphere. Well, we'll call it a hemisphere. That's going to be a half times four thirds pi r cubed. Make sure you write that down right. The number of people I see writing three quarters is ridiculous. It's four thirds, but it's cubed, not squared. Okay, right. Okay, next bit. That's our hemisphere. And then we've got our cube. Is it a cube or a cuboid? Cube. So our cube, each side is the same. And you're just doing length times breadth times height. So for a cube, length times breadth times height. So let's do each one separately. Our cube is six times six times six. I think that's 216, but that's only because I memorize cube numbers. Let's actually put it in the calculator. 216, yep, a centimeters cube. And let's now do our hemisphere. So our radius we need to find first. Clearly, the, the diameter is 6, so the radius is half, which is 3. Always watch for not trying to trick you, which we were. So it's a half times 4 thirds times pi times 3 cubed. What do we do that in a calculator? Well, let's see. A few ways to do fraction in a calculator. You can actually use a fraction button if you know that. I've got a thing you don't. Or you can just divide, right? 1 half is 1 divided by 2. So I can just put brackets 1 divided by 2 times brackets 4 divided by 3 times my pi times my 3 cubed so a power button and then a 3 press equals and I'll just give you the answer 56.54866 56.54866 blah 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 so our total volume is equal to our answer 56.548 dot 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 plus 216. Notice I'm not rounding there because I just can't be bothered. We'll round at the end, right? You should always round at the end anyway. So there's your answer. I plus the 216. I get 272.548. Not sure what your teachers told you about rounding, but technically you should never be any more accurate than the accuracy of the actual question, the measurements in the question, 
which there's only one anyway to one significant figure. So really, you could uh, you could write your answer as 300, and you should be fine. I wouldn't do it, right? Let's just make it 272.5, and that seems reasonable to me because it's not given us any real rounding to do for this question. Next question, answer five applications of maths. 2023 paper two question seven. Dave has a job in an office typing job documents. He is contracted to work 35 hours per week. He earns £11.20 per hour. He's paid time and a half for overtime. Last week he worked 37.5 hours. What is his gross pay? He paid with four deductions. Okay, does he speak? So he works 35 hours normally. So his normal pay is 35 times his £11.20. Then we need to add on whatever he gets at time and a half. So I need to work out the difference between 37.5 and 35, which is 2.5 hours. So he's getting 2.5 times his £11.20 still, but at time and a half means times by 1.5. Could do the two sums separately if you feel you want to, or brackets and let's just do it in one. Brackets 35 times £11.20 plus brackets 2.5 times £11.20 times time and a half of 1.5. Is £434 exactly. And that's part A that. A records the number of words per minute he typed during a 14 minute period with to calculate the medians and the lower and upper quartiles. Remember, for median, you need them in order from smallest to biggest, so be careful doing that. Let's do this now. The smallest number I think is 37. So let me write 37, and I think that appears twice. So 37 and 37. If I miss any, I do apologise. 39 is next. And then I can see we're in the 40s now. The lowest is 42. And then we get two 44s. So 42, 44, 44. And then I'm pretty sure we're getting 40. Oh, I missed 41. See, you always miss some. So let's put that in between 39 and 42. It's 41. Then there's 46, 47, 48. That was two 47s as well. Of course, I'm off as I go so I can keep track. Then I've got a 49. And then I'm going to run out of space, but it's fine. 51, 54. There we go. We can see that, can't we? Okay, so there's all my numbers. So now the median is the one in the middle when you put them in order. So I need to find the middle. A few ways you know it, you can cross off top and bottom as you go, which I will just do, but I won't cross them off. Actually, I'll just note them. Top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom, bottom and top, bottom and top, bottom and top. Ah, there's two in the middle. There's these two here. So the medians in the middle of these two, between 44 and 46, that should be obviously 45, but if you don't know that, add them up three by two. So now, we want to find our quartiles. Still get that little thing for clarity? So our quartiles, remember, are the middle of the first half and the middle of the second half. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I go one, two, three, one, two, three. There's our quartile there. So I'll just note that. That's quartile one. Similarly on the other side, that one must be quartile three. Just check. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yep, yep. And then just to answer the question in words, so our median is equal to 45. Our quartile 3 is equal to 48. And our quartile 1 is equal to 41. Words per minute, I suppose you could write, but we'll just leave it there. Construct a box plot for this set of data. Box plot, right. So how box plots work, remember, is your quartiles go on the ends of your boxes, your median inside the box, and then your lower highest and lowest numbers at the end. So let's do the, where's our highest and lowest numbers? Our lowest is 37, our highest is 54. Lowest is 37, highest is 54. Okay, there's our picture. It does go up in ones, but double check it. So 35, 36, 37, we've got 37 right here. So that's my position, I'll just put a little dot now, and then 54 
50, 51, 2, 3, 4. Being very careful with the algorithm. So where's my start and end positions? On the box. And then my quartiles, 41 and 48. So 40 is here, so 41, that's where my box starts. And 48, 45, 46, 47, 48, that's where my box ends. And you really should be using a ruler, but I will just uh, do it. I can get straight lines on this, but you should be using a ruler. 41 and 48, connecting that box up, connecting that up to our start and end points, and then putting our median in, which we can, can put that one line there for clarity. Our median was, remember, 45. So I'm on 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is right there. We can note these things. So that's our lowest, highest, median, quarter 1, quarter 3. But you should probably get away with just drawing the box and you'll be fine. Calculate the interquartile range for the number of words. The interquartile range, remember, is simply quartile 3 minus quartile 1, which we've already got twice now. So quartile 3, 48 minus 41. 48 minus 41, 7. So 7 words per min. Lynn works in the same office as Dave. Lynn also records the number of words per minute she can type. The interquartile range for the number of words that Lynn can type per minute is five. Make a valid comment. Like interquartile range is how spread out the data is. It's pretty much the same as standard deviation, same comment. So it's about how varied they are. Okay. So Lynn is five. Dave was seven. The number of words. Dave types per minute is more varied than lengths since 7 is bigger than 5. Done. Lynn earns £1,052 per week. National insurance calculated before deductions. Calculate Lynn's national insurance payment. Right. So up to £242, you don't pay anything. Then between these two numbers, you pay 13.2%. And then above this number, you pay 3.25%. So I need to work them all out individually. So Lynn earns 10.52. So for the upper bracket, I take away 9.67 to see how much she pays at 3.2%. That's 85 for upper and then for your mid part I just need to take away these two numbers from each other 967 minus 242 which is 725 and then on the rest you pay nothing so you just don't need to do anything so now we can work out the <coughs> national insurance. So for the upper part, we have got over 967 is 3.25%. So 3.25% of 85. Getting a calculator out. That is 3.25 divided by 100 times 85, 2.7625. Two decimal places, £2.76. Now we do the same for the mid. So our mid one is 725 and 13.25%. So 13.25% of 725. Get a calculator for that. 13.25 divided by 100 times 725 is 96.06, 96.06. So adding these together to get the full national insurance. So adding them together, our total national insurance, two pounds 76 plus 96.06, 2.76 plus 96.06 is 82 pound eight, 98 pound 
and 82 pence. Okay, next question. Lynn pays 4.5% of her wage and her pension, and our income tax is 52.08. Find the net pay. So for our pension, we need to work out 4.5% of her weekly wage, which was 1052. So using a calculator for that, 4.5 divided by 100 times 1052 is 47.34. And then we need to work out her net pay. So we take her full pay, which is 1052, minus everything that we need to take off. So the 9882, uh, it's the national insurance. The tax is 5208. And the pension is £47.34. So we'll just get a calculator and work all of that out. 1052 minus 98.82 minus 52.08 and minus 47 pound 34 and we get 85376 and we're done there. It's Green National 5 up because the last 2023 paper 2 question 8. Jacqueline buys items online and sells them in her shop. She bought a painting for £320 and sold for £415. Pound. Calculate the percentage profit she made. We need to look at how much she made then out of how much she bought it for. So we do 415 minus £320. I am getting tired on this one, so let me just get a calculator. That gives me 95. So our percentage profit is 95 out of 320, which is what she started with. She made 29.6875. Oh, I need to times that by 100, sorry. Times by 100 to get as a percent, 29.69%. Irene wants to buy a new dining table from a shop. It is advertised for a price. Irene wants to buy a new dining table from a shop. It is advertised for a price of eight hundred pound. She wishes to use a payment plan to buy the dining table. The total price is fourteen percent more than the advertised price. This account is sold. That's the quarter of the total price. Ten equal installments. A final payment. Calculate each monthly installment. Okay, total price we need to know so far first. 14% more, so 1.14, 100 plus 14 is 114% times 800. 912 pound. Now, I mean, let's do each bullet point in turn. So the first bullet point, quarter of the total price. So one quarter of 912. So 912 divided by four, in other words. is 228. That's the deposit, and she's got a final payment of £100 and 10 equal monthly instalments. So her total price is 912 I'm going to take away the deposit of 228 but I'm also going to take away the £100 at the final payment, and that will tell me how much I've got left to pay over 10 months. That's £584. So monthly payment is equal to 584 divided by 10. £58.40. Jacqueline owns a shop in Edinburgh, New York and Dubai. Jacqueline wants an item sent from her Dubai shop to her New York shop. It will be sent from her Dubai shop at 8.45 local time on the 24th of November. The expected delivery time is 90 hours. Wow. New York is five hours behind Edinburgh, Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh. Determine the local time and the date right, we expect to arrive at our shop in New York. A big one, this one, for the, uh, the end here. So, 90 hours. We need to work out how many days and hours that is. I need to do 90 divided by 24. So that's 3.75 days. So that's three days. Then the 0 0.75 part was 25, 24 hours in a day. 
So that's 18 hours. Now, she's in Dubai at 8.45 a.m. And it tells us different times for Edinburgh compared to New York and Dubai. So let's just work out this and then we'll add in the different times. Okay, so we're at um, 8.45. So I need to add on 18 hours. So 8 plus 18, if you just use a calculator for that, is 26. But once I hit midnight, it's a new day, okay? So it goes 8, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, or zero, then one, two. So I'm on two o'clock in the morning, 45 the next day. So that was starting on the 24th of November. So I'm now on the 25th, after 18 hours. I'm now going to add three days. 25, 26, 27, 28. So I'm now on the 28th at the same time. But this is Dubai time. Now I need to work out this strange thing of New York and Dubai. So I'm, in, I'm trying to get to New York. And New York is five hours behind Edinburgh. Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh. So changing to... Edinburgh time I'm on 0245 on the 28th and Dubai is four hours ahead of Edinburgh I need to take away four hours minus four hours well that's going to knock me back again that's fine it doesn't matter but 0245 minus four hours so that becomes 0145 0, 0, 0, 45, 23 22 45 and that will now be the 27th. So now going to New York time. It says New York is five hours behind Edinburgh, so I need to take away five hours. So that gives me 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 17, And I'm still on the 27th of November. And we're done there. This has been Clare Maths today. We went through the whole of the National 5 Applications of Maths 2023 Paper 2. That was a big one. Hope you found that useful. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.